So in this video, we're just going to have an in-depth look at the EJ20, the various versions of the engine over the years, and just some of the unique differences in the design characteristics of these impressive engine blocks. So we start with the EJ20E, which was a single overhead cam, naturally aspirated version, as fitted to the Subaru Legacy and the Japanese domestic version of the Subaru Impreza between the years of 1993 and 1999. Power range from 97 to about 130 horsepower. There were some regional differences and variations in that, but this is considered a good, reliable engine by most enthusiasts of the EJ20. The EJ20D is a double overhead cam, naturally aspirated version of this engine, again renowned for its reliability and longevity. The EJ202 was a naturally aspirated single overhead cam version, as was the EJ203, and this was fitted in the Forester, the Legacy, the Impreza, and the Exiger version of the Subaru. And power in those seemed to hover around about the 150 horsepower mark. Some were slightly higher, some were slightly lower. The EJ20G came with either a rocker style design in the head or a bucket design on the head. And there was a closed deck and open deck version. So just a simple explanation as to the difference between a closed deck and an open deck. When you take the head off, you can see into the water channels in the open deck design, but the closed deck design, it's closed off. So you you can't see into those water channels. So there's pros and cons to each of those designs. Some would argue that the cooling is better in one. Others would argue that the other is stronger and more rigid and you can make more power. But there's certainly counter arguments to each of those. So people seem to have a preference. So I'm not going to get into the argument as to which is better and what the exact pros and cons of the closed deck and open deck are. But please let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. I love hearing what people think about these different engine designs and particularly with regard to the EJ20. Then we've got the EJ20K, which was used primarily in the Impreza WRX in quite a few different regions. And it it was certainly a very, very impressive engine. There was a shim under bucket design and a shim over bucket design. So as the cam rotates, it presses down on the tappet bucket, which pushes down on the valve stem, opening the valve. So the shim goes between the bucket and the cam. So in a shim over bucket, the shim is directly in contact with the cam. In a shim under bucket design, the shim is located underneath the bucket, making contact with the valve stem at the top of the spring seat. The benefits you get with the shim under design is you don't get the bounce or the movement that happens with a shim over setup at high RPM so it makes the engine much more reliable. So the WRX is tended to use the shim over bucket and the STIs use the shim under bucket design. Then you've got the EJ205 and this was used in the WRX the Forester. It was also used in a Saab. So again a very well regarded reliable engine. Some people refer to the EJ20T and the EJ20 20TT to refer to the turbo and the twin turbo variants, but they were not official designations used by Subaru in describing the engines. But you might see that crop up, and basically the T or the TT just refers to whether it's a turbo or a twin turbo. So don't get caught out or hung up on that particular model designation. So I really hope this has been useful to you. As I said at the beginning, this is just an overview of the EJ20. There's lots of different versions of the EJ20. So I really, in fairness, need to do very detailed videos on each of the EJ20 engines and what the best upgrades and mods are. So to do that, I really need your help and your feedback. So please fire up those comments. Let me know what your experience has been and specifically which engine you've got so that we can start to build these ultimate tuning guides with your help. So thanks for watching. Please boot that like button because that really does help us to get out there. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so because we would love you to stay tuned. And I've lined this video up for you that you should find really interesting. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.